Hi friends, this is Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another set of ornaments that I wanted to share with you. I finally was able to get my Christmas tree up this weekend and on Thanksgiving while I was cooking dinner I made my last round of ornaments so I did turn on my camera. I wanted to share this process with you because I'm so happy with how these ornaments turned out. I'm going to be using a few products from Iron Orchid Designs and some casting resin, paint, we just, we have a lot to do. So why don't we jump right into the mold that we're gonna be using. This is IOD's frame mold and I'll be using casting resin to make the frames. This particular box of amazing casting resin came with two bottles of solution. Bottle A is clear and thick and then bottle B is a lot thinner and it has a yellow tone to them. You wanna mix one to one ratio and the box is going to come with a couple little plastic measuring cups now this is a new box and i'm using my older measuring cups from um, a previous box because i had ordered this box online and so the measuring cups when they were delivered were cracked so that's why even though these are brand new bottles my um, little cups are dirty because they're from a previous box now the, the box also comes with popsicle sticks so you can stir the, um, the liquids together. You do wanna stir them for about 30 seconds. I don't use the pop popsicle sticks. I actually use a plastic spatula and I have this sped up pretty quickly. I don't stir this fast in real time, um, but you do wanna stir for 30 seconds. I don't um, I'm not whipping it. I'm not trying to put a lot of air <laughs> into my little Dixie cup because I don't want there to be a lot of bubbles. Excuse me. So once I had the uh, mixture completely mixed up, now I only have about two minutes to get it poured into the mold. And then I'm going to use that plastic spatula to move the resin around just to make sure that it is filling that frame up all the way to the edges and also if I can remove any bubbles because th there is a lot of bubbles right now in this frame, but I just use my spatula to kind of pop those bubbles um, so they'll come to the top or just, just so they're not sitting at the bottom of the frame because that is what is going to be showing once we pop the resin out of the mold. So I'm trying to get rid of as much bubbles as I can, as I can and also making sure that that resin is all the way to all of the edges of this frame. The resin will start turning a milky white when it's getting ready to set and that's when I know to stop playing uh, with it with my spatula. So then I let it sit for about 10 minutes. It'll turn solid white like this and it makes it super easy to pop it out of the mold. Uh, it's still bendable. I can I can bend it if I wanted to right now. I do not want to, so I'm just gonna set this aside and let it fully harden on a flat surface and continue to make frames. I did use 20 ml out of each bottle for each frame. I made nine frames in this sitting and I still have enough in my bottle to make probably three more frames just to let you know what you can get out of one box of the casting, um, the, the casting resin. And um, though I do the majority of the work for these ornaments while I was cooking dinner on Thursday, the casting resin, I did do that Wednesday night. So I had all of the frames ready to go Thursday morning. Um, I did take a razor blade and just ran that really quickly around the edges just to get off any of the smallest little pieces of resin that was um, left over from the mold. And once I had the edges clean, it's time to start painting. So the paint that I'm gonna use is Debbie Design Diaries DIY paint. I'm starting with my favorite color, in the, her collection, which is the Bohemian Blue. This is super dark when it's wet. It will dry back to just a lovely, almost like a midnight blue. You'll see that in a couple minutes, but uh, I am gonna speed up the painting process here. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just trying to make sure that I get all of the paint in all of the little grooves. These are very detailed uh, molds, very detailed frames, so I did one full coat on every frame and then once the, and this paint takes hardly any time to dry. Maybe 
a half an hour to an hour with no help. And since I had other stuff going on, I actually did not pull out my blow dryer to help the drying process. I let these all just dry on their own. And I have a few different paintbrush sizes out too because I definitely need some, needed some really small paintbrushes to get into those details. So the next color that I'm going to use is Layered Chocolate. And I'm going to show all three colors um, that I painted with. So this Layered Chocolate is a lovely brown. And I know brown makes a lot of people cringe. That's just not a color that they would reach for. But I'm telling you, the three frames that I made in this sitting, I think the brown was my favorite. Um, once all of the painting and all the detail work was done, it just turned out so beautiful. And then the last color is this gorgeous red. This is um, carnival red and it's super, super warm. It definitely leans on the warm side of the color wheel. And I just really, it's a really pleasant red. It's not super bright once it's dry. All of these colors do dry back quite a bit. So, and you'll see that um, in the next, see how this is, you can see all of the details now with that Bohemian Blue, whereas when it was wet, it was so dark. I'm not gonna have to put a second coat on all of these frames, but I do need to go back and do a little bit of touch up work because there are some white places in the detail work that, need to be covered up. So I have a really small paintbrush out. I'm just moving my frame back and forth so I can see in the light if I have any little spots of white that stick out and I'll just quickly cover those spots with the paint. And again, let that sit um, put aside to dry. And we're gonna move on to a little bit of waxing. I do have clear wax out and a small blending brush to add the wax. I am not waxing every part of this frame. The wax is going to make the paints darken a little bit here and there. So I'm just doing an uneven layer of the wax and I'm going to compare, show you a comparison of an unwaxed frame next to the waxed frame. So you can see how the color difference is with that clear wax on it. I have a slightly damp, rag now that I am brushing um, on the rat on um, excuse me on the frame it's going to pick up some of the paint it's going to pick up some of the wax and now I'm just getting just different um, variations of the paint now on the frame I'm really liking how this is looking but now I really want to emphasize the detail work so I grabbed some rub and buff. This is antique gold and I still have my gloves on. I'm just going to use my finger and rub that antique gold around the frame, making sure that I'm really bringing out the details of the frame. Rub and buff is a product where you don't need a lot. Just a little bit will go a long way. So I just squeeze the tiniest amounts from the bottle onto this craft paper. And not only am I putting a small amount on my finger, but I'm also dabbing that small amount on the paper too, just to get the excess off. So I'm only bringing the smallest amount to the frame because rub and buff, you can always add more. And I do add more, but you can't take it away. You can't like wipe it off. You would have to repaint the area if you put too much on. So just keep that in mind if this is a product you haven't used before. It also comes in several colors. Uh, I think that there are two or three different golds. I find that the, an the antique gold is I just think it's such a beautiful warm gold. I also have gold leaf, which is more on the cooler side. I just, I thought that th for what I needed the rub and buff to do for these frames, the um, antique gold was the perfect color for it. And here's a quick side by side of just a painted frame next to a fully finished frame. Now we're gonna make something to frame. I have two pieces of scrapbook paper. This is from the open scrapbook paper stock area at Hobby Lobby. I picked Christmas music paper. Um, I have red and black here. I did go with the red paper for all of the ornaments. 
Now I have my paper trimmer out. So this is my tonic guillotine trimmer. I've had this for years. It is strong enough to cut through that chipboard just fine. Um, so I'm cutting the chipboard and the pattern paper to four by five and a half inches. So the frame will fit nicely on top of the chipboard. Now, before I attach the paper to the chipboard, I do want to age it a little bit. So I'm going to crinkle it up first and then I'm going to use archival ink. I have coffee out and a blending brush and I'm just going to blend some ink um, over the paper and on the edges. I just want to emphasize the wrinkles I just put in the paper and just add some like faux aged spots to the paper before I attach the paper to the chipboard. And I'm going to attach it with Liquitex matte medium. So I'm going to brush the matte medium onto the back of or onto the front of the chipboard and then onto the back of the paper. Make sure it's nice and wet and then I'll attach the paper to the chipboard and then I'm going to pour some more Liquitex on top of the paper and smooth the paper out. Now the reason why I put the paper on or put the matte medium on top of the paper first of all for me to be able to spread the paper out I do need to have a wet surface and I need to have my fingers wet so I'm not ripping that paper or just it's just good to have a wet surface to work with when you're using um, Liquitex. Uh, it's not going to damage the front of the paper in any sort of way. So I just really used my finger to even out that paper and make sure I had an excellent bond to the chipboard and there was no air bubbles underneath the paper. And once I was happy with how flat the paper was, I set the chipboard aside to dry. Now comes the fun part, which is decorating the music paper with some transfers. So I have three transfer books from IOD. This is part of their Christmas collection from this year. I did decide on a few transfers from the Candy Cane Cottage and the Holly Glen transfer books. So this first one is the Candy Cane Cottage. I love the Santa Claus. I thought he would be perfect. Um, for a frame and he just sits so nicely on the music paper. Now the transfers are really easy to use. I just used my detail scissors to cut the transfer out of the book and now I am making sure I like the placements of the transfer on my music sheet before I push it down onto the paper. And transfers are just they're pretty much really, really thin stickers. So the back of Santa is, is sticky, but not so sticky if I put it down on the paper. It's just, it's there. I do have to use a tool that comes with the transfer books to really push Santa into um, the pattern paper. And once he is on the pattern paper, he is He's there. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's going to come nicely off of the acetate paper. And I'm just taking my time just to make sure I have all of him on the music paper. And then I'm going to turn that acetate upside down and rub that over the Santa just to make sure he's fully bonded onto the music paper. And he is good to go. Now we're going to go through the Holly Glenn book and I'm going to just do one more transfer on screen and I, there's, I just thought this bird scene so pretty. I'm again using my detail scissors just to cut that bird out of the book and this bird scene is is a lot bigger than what I needed for my frame but I, <laughs> I still I didn't care. I thought it was so pretty. Um, half of it's not even going to be shown but I'm I'm fine with that. So I, again, just put that bird on the music sheet. I'm going to use my re reverse tweezers just to kind of get, I needed a little delicate hand to move the birds just slightly. So I, that's why I pulled out the reverse tweezers. And I have some of that 
sticker or the transfer um, sticking off the edge of the chipboard. And that's totally fine. I'm just going to pull the acetate off to where that sticker or that part of the nest is going to stay on the transfer sheet. And I did forget to mention that I did paint the back of the chipboard before I added the transfers. So whatever frame I was planning on gluing onto the chipboard, I painted the same color onto the back of the chipboard before doing the transfer. And now I'm going to glue the frame onto the chipboard. Now I picked adhesive. I just picked a bottle that was in our storage room. I don't know if I picked the right adhesive. The jury is still out on that. I guess I will find out next year when I go to decorate the tree again. But this is Gorilla Wood Glue. And I just squeezed a small amount on the frame. I'm gonna use my gloved finger to spread that adhesive out all over the edges just so it wouldn't make a big mess oozing out everywhere. Because I did let this sit. Once I had the frame in position, I did put something heavy on top of each frame and I let the frames sit overnight with that heavy weight on them. So now we are into Friday morning and I am adding a thin coat of um, DIYs, big top, top coats, which um, when I was brushing this varnish over the transfers, it, the, the varnish did um, puddle a little bit, which got me worried. I did not want it to dry spotty, but it didn't dry spotty. And um, I used, again, I used like the really thin or the really small paintbrush just to get that varnish into all the detail work on the frames. Once I had the varnish on and dried, I did ask my husband if he could kindly drill holes on the top of the frames and add eyelets which he did. Um, I found some gold eyelets on Amazon the other day. So I had those delivered before Thanksgiving. And the last thing that I need to do is add some twine through the eyelets and these ornaments are ready to be put on the tree. So I spent my evening last night decorating the tree and it was just so satisfying. Last year when I was decorating our tree, I knew it was time to like revamp the tree. It was very 2015 Costco. <laughs> so uh, that I'd been making Christmas ornaments for a couple years. So I thought, you know what? I want to make next year's, all of next year's Christmas ornaments. And I've been able to do it. And I've made most of those ornaments on camera. So I'm going to leave a playlist to the Christmas ornaments that I've made this year. So you can go and see the other projects if you have not watched them yet. And um, so I'll leave that link on screen. And um, I also would love to hear from you. I love how these turned out, but I wanna hear from you. Tell me what you think. And if this is a project you see yourself doing, do you have these um, products already in your craft area? I would love to know. That is going to finish today's video. I, again, I'm just cannot get over how pretty these frames turned out. They look fabulous on the tree. And um, I'm gonna be back shortly with another video. I'm gonna start getting into um, Christmas, handmade Christmas gifts. And I have a lot of really fun ideas coming. So I um, am busy creating in my craft room. I'm going to be back in a couple days with another video. So I'll see you then. Take care, friends.